How's it going guys? Ed Ricker here, coming to you in full 4K resolution. Oh yeah! But why? Why am I shooting this in 4K? I'm just sitting here in front of you. Do I want to show every pore on my skin? Do I want to show that nose booger that I thought I cleaned out? There are a lot of reasons why perhaps I wouldn't want to shoot in 4K either. This video might be long and it's going to take up a hell of a lot of space on my hard drive if it's in 4K. But a couple years from now, when every average household is supposed to have a 4K display in their house, they're going to really appreciate the fact that I shot this in 4K, right? There are definitely some pros and cons to shooting 4K as opposed to 1080, and it really varies from project to project, and you really can't approach it any one way. And I can't give you the answer, so spoiler alert, there's going to be no right or wrong way in this video. But hopefully we can talk about some of these things and help you come to your own conclusions. Let's put out this graphic real quick. You can see 4K resolution is the size of this video, 4096 by 2160. That's what we call the Digital Cinema Initiative, or DCI, which is true 4K. Then you have Ultra HD, which is not technically 4K because it doesn't actually get as wide as regular 4K. That's 3840 by 2160 pixels, and that's what you're going to see a lot of displays in electronic stores and computer displays and laptops. Then you have our 2K and our 1920 by 1080, which is our regular HD. And you can see that HD is actually one-fourth the size of UHD and 4K. So even though 4K televisions aren't four times the size of regular 1080 televisions, they are going to jam-pack more pixels per square inch than a regular 1080 HD television. So this definitely produces a clearer image. We can see more detail in the picture. Plus, if you're good at editing, you can do some punching in with the footage to get maybe a different camera composition. You can do some digital zooms, some digital pans. You can even make it seem like there's an A camera and a B camera shooting the same subject, and then you can switch back and forth. So it's a pretty cool thing. And you can do all that without losing too much quality because you're working with a lot of pixels already. We kind of touched on this already, but you can future-proof your videos, you know, in theory, by shooting in 4K, and then people who have 4K televisions in the next 5-10 years, when it becomes a little more standard for the average household, will really enjoy your 4K videos still, and it's not going to look like it's old content. 4K footage also makes for a sharper 1080 export. So if you're using 4K footage on a 1080 project or timeline, or along with other footage shot 1080 natively, um, you're going to see that that 4K footage that's been downsized to a 1080 size still looks a lot clearer. It could also look cleaner, you know, less noise, less grain. So that is another benefit. Plus, you can pull still frames from your footage if you're shooting in 4K a lot easier than if you were shooting in HD. So up until now, there seems to be actually a lot of benefit to shooting in 4K. I mean, why would you ever shoot in 1080 or regular HD if you can shoot in 4K, right? Well, here are some reasons why maybe you want to reconsider. A lot of computers and tablets and cell phones still don't play 4K well. In fact, they might not even have that as an option. So if you're watching on YouTube, you're streaming, it won't even have that 4K option selectable in the play bar. Also, if it's 4K footage on your hard drive, you might even see stuttering. Your, your computer isn't even going to play the footage at all. It might even crash your computer just by playing 4K footage when your computer isn't beefy enough to actually play it correctly. Which also brings me to display issues. So if your computer does play it smoothly and you're still watching on a sub 4K display, you might see aliasing of hard edges like tree branches and the sides of buildings. You might see moray issues with the small patterns of shingles on roofs or grass or maybe uh, bricks on the side of a building. And these display issues are actually what I see a lot of people who buy drones have issues with. Because a lot of people who fly drones recreationally and they get their first drone that might be the first time they've ever tried to actually display 4K footage on their computer instead of just viewing it on YouTube or something. So they might definitely start to experience issues and think it's the drone's fault when in reality it's their computer's fault. That also brings us to editing workload. So if your computer isn't beefy enough to handle 4K editing, then you're going to have an issue with that too. I've spent a lot of money upgrading my computer to be able to edit 4K footage and it still doesn't do it well all the time. 4K footage is harder to process, it takes longer to export, it takes longer to ingest the footage from your SD card onto your computer. So 4K footage definitely is a more expensive or at least a more time-consuming workflow for the post-production. Plus, it takes money just to store your footage onto a drive. So, you know, you may be buying a hard drive to store your footage, well, if you fill it up, you got to buy another one. So you got to take into account what it costs 
per gigabyte to be storing footage indefinitely on a drive. Now, if I were to spend $200 to buy a four terabyte Western Digital black hard drive, that's roughly $50 per terabyte or about five cents per gigabyte that I'm spending. So a project that I'm shooting in 4K that results in an hour and a half of total footage or about 64 gigabytes of footage, it's gonna cost me about $3.20 to store on a drive indefinitely. Now, any videographer worth his salt is going to also back up that footage onto another hard drive. Multiply that by two and you get $6.40 for the original files and the backup files. Now, if you're shooting every day or frequently or you're uploading to YouTube with any great frequency or you're working on a lot of projects, that can add up. Also, 1080 still looks great. And as cameras get better, you know, with more dynamic range, better color sampling and bitrate recording, you might see that 1080, you could still get a great image with. A lot of times if I shoot in 4K with a drone or with a camera, I actually take away a little bit of the sharpness in the camera settings so it doesn't look so sharp because sometimes that digital sharpening just almost looks a little too digital. It doesn't have any personality to it. And I do realize that that could just be personal taste as well for that point. Also, it's been said that the optimal recommended viewing distance for a 4K television or display is twice as close as a 1080 display. And that's because if you're far enough away, you're not gonna see the difference between 1080 and 4K. So in other words, you have to get closer to the television in order to fully appreciate the pixel density. 2.7K might be a good compromise. And I've done some testing between 4K, 2.7K, and 2K, and 2.7K definitely looked clearer than the 1080, but didn't use up as much space for storage and was easier to edit than 4K footage shot natively 4K. So do you guys use 1080 or 4K primarily for when you record? Use the interactive poll here with the information icon. Let me know. As with always, check out edricker.com for all the different camera and drone equipment that I use on the regular. Subscribe if you like the video. And until next time, happy deciding on 4K or not. <laughs>